There are many, many different ways to create a site model, but actually the one I'm about to show you is probably the easiest and the most accurate I've ever used. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a site model in Rhino. If we're just meeting, my name's Christopher and here at All Arc, we offer an alternative perspective on all things architecture and design. So at the end, when you have your 3D buildings done and you maybe wanna give them more detail, check out this video linked here and in the description below. It'll show you how to take facades from Google Earth and then add them onto your 3D buildings. Actually, no way to download a whole city in 2D, but I'm gonna to get to that a little bit later. All right, let's jump right in. Go into your internet browser and go to cadmapper.com. I have the link in the description below. Now click get started creating a file. And this is where you're gonna sign up. Now CADMapper is actually completely free as long as your selection on the map is small. If you're planning on doing a large area, you may have to pay a little bit. Go ahead and sign up here. And if you have an academic email, go ahead and use that so you can get a discount on all your purchases. After you have signed in, it's gonna bring you to this screen. Go up to search or input latitude and longitude and type in the area where you wanna grab your site model from. For me, I'm going to choose Ann Arbor, Michigan. Now when you move this around, it either increases or decreases your selection. But if you go small enough, you can actually select an area that's completely free. So right now I'm actually below one square kilometer, but as soon as I select something a little bit larger than that, it's asking me to pay $6. Because I want my site model to be a little bit smaller than one square kilometer, I'm going to go ahead and shrink this box down some. And if you click in the center and move it around, you can choose where the selection is. So I'm gonna select this area of downtown Ann Arbor. Over on the left-hand side, you can choose programs like AutoCAD, SketchUp, Illustrator, ArchiCAD, but today I'm gonna to show you how to do it in Rhino. So go ahead and make sure Rhino is selected. So you want it to include 3D buildings if it's available, and also you want it to set a false height if no 3D data is available. That means if their program doesn't know how tall the building is, it'll just set it to three meters. If you want topography, make sure topography is selected and set the distance you want your contours to occur at. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it at four. Ann Arbor doesn't have a lot of elevation changes, so this should be fine. Highways eight, major roads at six, minor roads at four, and paths at two. All these numbers should work perfect. Go over to create file on the bottom right. And after it's done loading, click download here on the left-hand side. Go to your downloads folder, right-click it, and do extract all and click extract. Now go into the newly extracted folder. Let's go ahead and open that up in Rhino. Now that you have it open in Rhino, let's go to our perspective view and set the display to shaded. So this is great if you want a model that shows elevation changes, but I would say most of the time you probably don't. So let's go ahead and head back into CAD mapper and click this edit map button at the top left. Let's go ahead and turn off topography. This way it'll make our topography completely flat, but the buildings will still have height. Click create file. And click the download button once again. When you have it open in Rhino, go ahead to perspective view. I went ahead and zoomed out all the way and let's switch our display mode to shaded. You can see that there's no ground plane. You can either draw one or create one yourself using a rectangle tool and then using the command planar surface. Or you can simply type in ground plane, press enter. Go ahead and turn that on. We're actually getting a little error that says the display mode for the current viewport is set to hide the ground plane. If you click show the ground plane in shaded viewports, it'll switch that setting for you. You can go ahead and close out of this dialog box now. If you're using this model for a 3D space only, you're actually already good to go. If you head over to the layers panel, you can see you have all your buildings on one layer, your parks on another, and your outline on a third layer. Outline is actually your roads. Usually I'll change this to say roads, so I don't forget. If you want to CNC or laser cut this site model, go over to the roads layer and activate it, then turn off the buildings and the parks layer. You can see the outlines of the roads are already here, so you can just CNC or laser cut them. But what's missing is the outline of the buildings. So let's go ahead and activate our buildings layer and deselect the roads layer and go to our right view. And we're gonna hold shift and control at the same time. On Mac, that's gonna be shift and command. And we're gonna drag from left to right and we're only going to select the very, very bottom 
of our buildings. Go back into perspective and now use the command dupe face border. With all of those selected, right click your roads layer and choose change object layer. Now, once again, activate your roads layer and turn off your buildings layer. Now you can see you have the outline of all the buildings. Now here's a quick tip for you for sticking around. CADMapper actually offers many free city files. On their homepage, at the top right, you can see free city files at the top. Go ahead and click that link. From here, you can see they offer many, many cities. These city files are great because they have a lot of detail, but unfortunately, they're only 2D. This means the file doesn't include 3D buildings. If you like the video, please like the video and consider subscribing down below if you want to see future content. If you want to learn how to give more detail to your context building facades, check out the video at the top there. I actually think you'll like the one at the bottom too. You should check that one out. Regardless though, thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.